Resilience, following nature's example of sustainable development. How does nature experiment and adapt? How does this apply to human systems? We'll take a look at these questions in this video. Biomimicry is the idea of taking inspiration from nature's designs. It has been popularized by Janine Venius in her 1997 book of the same name. What can we learn from nature about sustainable development? Natural ecosystems without the disturbance of humans go through cycles, as does each organism, birth, growth, flourishing, decline, death, and rebirth. Holling notes that the basis of ecosystems and social ecological systems are adaptive cycles where the behavior of the complex systems is governed by a small number of controlling processes. Together, these set of controlling processes form the framework of nature's rules. Ecosystems both maintain a set of stable relationships with organisms and mimic this process of change. Let's look a little closer at Holling's ideas. Systems function as a set of nested subsystems. Each subsystem is semi-autonomous and is formed from the interactions among a set of variables that share similar speeds and spatial attributes. Each level communicates a set of information or quantity of material to the next higher, slower, and coarser level. As long as this communication between upper and lower levels is maintained, smaller experimentation can happen within levels. The change happens through a constant cycle of what you might call small experiments or innovations within the hierarchy of the stable system. If the experiments enable better adaptation to the environmental changes, they thrive. Experiments that don't enable better adaptation go out of existence. In this way, natural systems are constantly in cycles of innovation. This illustrates in nature how a healthy system can invent and experiment, benefiting from inventions that create opportunity while being kept safe from experiments that destabilize the system. Each level within the hierarchy is allowed to operate at its own pace, protected from above by slower, larger levels, but invigorated from below by faster, smaller cycles of innovation. The whole system is therefore both creating and conserving. The interactions between cycles combine learning with continuity. How does this work in an ecosystem? This depicts the system of a boreal forest. The shorter-lived species, like grasses, can experiment with the, within the stability of the system formed by the trees. The grasses send the results of their experiment, the biomass nutrients, to the system of the trees. In this model, sustainability consists of the capacity to create, test, and maintain adaptive capability. Development is the process of creating, testing, and maintaining opportunity. Therefore, sustainable development thus refers to the goal of fostering adaptive capabilities and creating opportunities. A socioeconomic system would look more like this. Here the axes are the number of people involved and the turnover time. So culture exists at the level of millions of people and can last for hundreds to thousands of years. The subsystem beneath the culture might be a constitution. Notice that the laws, contracts, and policies exist for smaller groups of people and for a smaller length of time. At the smallest level are individual or group decisions. What you might find in this scenario is that experimentation and innovation occur at this faster, smaller level, and what is learned from these are passed up and eventually end up in culture. And in this model of sustainable development, the goal would be to foster the ability to innovate and to learn and to embed what's being learned through an adaptive process into policies, laws, constitutions, and cultural practices. There are three critically important qualities of a system. The first is potential. The potential represents the inherent wealth of a system. The internal controllability of a system is the degree of interconnectedness, which is a measure of the degree to which the system components are reliant upon one another for their function. Resilience is the ability of the system to reconfigure itself in the face of disturbances without a significant loss of its critical functioning. Holling proposes that these three attributes are interrelated. Well, how do these look when they're all put together? Notice that as a system grows, the interconnectedness also increases, as does the potential or wealth of the system. As it reaches maturity, 
It is at its highest interconnectivity and greatest wealth. However, it's also at its least resilient state. That is because there is a high degree of interconnectedness, a mature system is vulnerable to collapse. An example in human history is the collapse of the Roman Empire. A more recent example in human history, perhaps an example that we're living now, is the collapse of the global economy in 2008 brought on by the collapse of the U.S. economy. It's this high degree of interconnectivity that causes the entire system to be vulnerable to this type of collapse. Perhaps the industrial era is in a state of collapse now because of our reliance on fossil fuels. According to Hollings' model, we should enter a period of innovation or rebirth as a way of recovering from this collapse. Natural systems are organized in semi-autonomous levels formed by interactions among a set of variables that share similar speeds and spatial arrangement. Each level communicates information or material to the next higher, slower, and coarser level. The higher levels serve to stabilize the environment so that experimentation can take place at the lower levels. Sustainable development through a biomimicry would then suggest that we foster adaptive capabilities and creating opportunities, learning, and innovation.